Hi, I'm Bia from People of Maha. Hi, I'm Mila from People of Maha. And you're watching the Chana 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 podcast. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have very special guests today joining all the way from Bulgaria. We got members of People of Maha joining the podcast. Hey. Hello. Hi, Bia. Hi, Mia. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, how are you doing? Ah, uh, a bit tired actually. Yeah. <laughs> we are touring around Bulgaria. We just had a gig last night, so we we're like uh, still kind of uh, waking up and yeah. situating what happened today. Right. So this is the uh, the ball to uh, the your latest tour, right? Uh, Blue to gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, finally <laughs> yes yes it's actually our first one as well so it's been fun right so uh is it is it now okay to perf- do live shows in bulgaria there's no restrictions anymore everything is okay or? yeah kind of yeah. They, they lift all the restrictions before summer so people start uh, arranging uh festivals outdoor festivals mainly because it's summer it gets very hot nobody wants to stay inside so there's a lot of outdoor festivals going on or playing uh, gardens and this kind of stuff and that's what we mostly what we've been doing yeah. we've barely been inside really playing this past month or two we felt like we have lives <laughs> yeah yeah it's been um, after a long period with no concerts we managed to schedule a small tour during the summer so it was very exciting right how is the crowd uh, do you get a lot of people for these gigs though i think it depends yeah it depends on the yeah. concert it, 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 it depends on the day where <laughs> we are on the day on the mood. yeah yeah on the mood but we had some great crowds uh across we had like sometimes a 20 crowd people in a festival in a little town here in bulgaria that was exceptional they were just so great that uh it, it does feel like sometimes much better than having like a, a hundred crowd that yeah. don't really care that through their place so there. yeah yeah we had uh, some great experience right uh so before we start can you introduce yourself and tell me what you do in the band of course so i'm bia i'm the lead singer in people of maha and i'm mila the guitar player of people of maha so uh we are missing alex right yeah alex yeah. Can, can be here with us right now she's not feeling okay but uh, soon yeah soon the right. next time yeah yeah okay so alex plays drums so uh, who who plays bass we don't have a bassist we we are a trio a power trio <laughs> power <laughs> girls yeah yeah so we have we do have uh ghost bases friends musicians that sometimes play live with us but we are also used to programming part of uh or the bass or synths and this kind of stuff and make it as as we go because in the end of the day we are starting out we've been together for three yeah. years and this is our first tour so we are kind of <laughs> figuring out how things go yeah right so it, it it's uh it's probably very exciting plus you you are learning a lot of things by this tour right yeah we had uh, gigs before yeah. but never uh, uh really set out tour that we travel every week or every two weeks <laughs> yes yes we usually just had a few gigs a month in Sofia where we're from here in Bulgaria and yeah that that was pretty much it. so it's a very different experience we are adjusting a little bit and we've been away from home for 10 days now so tomorrow we are going back and I yeah. can't wait to see my dogs <laughs> <laughs> right right i i, I actually first uh, i really love bulgaria in a sense because there is this famous concert happened in bulgaria which is the uh, big four live in bulgaria sofia um, metallica slayer megadeth I, you know that that there is a famous dvd i actually have the dvd uh, oh, so it, it, it's a very famous gig right and it it highlighted sofia a lot in the especially with the metal fans <laughs> 
Ah, yes. Bulgaria is big on metal. <laughs> Mila can say Marcos is the Bulgarian yeah, yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> We don't see, we don't have like two styles, but yeah, we have the Bulgarian style and we have metal. Like rock is something in the middle. We are trying to do to push it to be more like not in the middle to be on the same level as some um, uh, metal. But no, no, metal yeah, is everybody <laughs> like as baby listens either to metal, <laughs> yeah, or something you know, Yes, the, the, it's really big the the culture here. We have so many metal festivals. Oh yes, yes. We even played in few. We even play in few me metal festivals, which is we're a bit so weird metal. because we're all an alternative rock band. But still, they're like, oh no, come, just to have something a little bit different, you know? Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah. it would be yelling on, yelling on, yelling one after, <laughs> just to have a little break. And I was like, okay. <laughs> right. Uh, so, so Bia, you're, you're, you're from Brazil, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm... Um, the intruder here. I'm not from Bulgaria. I do live in Sofia in Bulgaria for seven years now. But uh, yeah, originally from Brazil, grew up there and then uh, found Bulgaria uh, many, many years ago <laughs> and fell in love and decided to move here. Right. So tell me a little bit about uh, your childhood and uh, your like earliest uh, memory of music. You want to go? Yeah, you wanna sure. Start? Yeah. Right. So I've been Play. I've been playing on guitar since I was nine, eight or nine, but I didn't start playing then on guitar. I started playing on triangle. <laughs> That's my favorite part of my story that I played that. But then I just fell in love in guitar and I decided to play more and more and more as a hobby. And it's been maybe five years since I switched from an acoustic guitar to an electric guitar. And I decided to continue to have something more than just a hobby. And then I met Bia. Mm. And then we started the band, playing together. And I don't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. Yeah. yeah. So you went from triangle to electric guitar. Yes. Seems, uh, <laughs> seems like a normal person. <laughs> uh, for me, I grew up in a family of musicians. Nobody, nobody's a professional musician. But I come from a small community in Brazil, from a small town, so everybody plays in church. So I really grew up going going to church with my family and singing every Sunday morning in the church choir. And my mom made me play the keyboard so I could play in church as well. So at, when I was about 10 years old, she, she signed me up for classes so I could play in church. So pretty much my whole life up until I was 17 and I moved out to go to college was playing every weekend in church with my family and today even today if i go back to brazil i will still go to the sunday morning mass just to sing with my family so we, were, we had this really big tradition and we always had to to be involved in music my whole family well actually from all my uncles the only one who doesn't play the guitar is the only one who actually took guitar lessons <laughs> everybody else is self-taught so there was a lot of learning by doing and improving and improvising on the go and when i went to university i actually got disconnected a bit from music i had uh, other things sorry about until i moved to bulgaria yeah sorry <laughs> until i moved to bulgaria and yeah a job fell through and i was kind of like okay now I'm, i really don't have a direction where to go i need to find something a hobby or something to keep me centered otherwise i, I think everything is falling apart and I started doing singing lessons uh, in Sofia in a school. I, I had never had singing lessons before. And that's where I met Mila, actually. We went to the same uh, music school in Sofia. She was going for guitar. I was going for voice. Alex, our drummer, was also going for voice uh, because she, she's our, uh, Mila and her, they are back in vocals, so they, they also sing. So we, we kind of all met because our school, uh, they, organize, together, yeah, so. they organize charity concerts because they are in and Joe in the end of the day and they have like their own projects. So they, they try to raise money for it. So in this concert, they just group together different students uh, to play a song live, to have some stage experience. And that's how we met. So Mila and I met first and then a yeah. few months later, Mila also met Alex and we all got the in touch. Connection. <laughs> yeah, Mila was the, the link between <laughs> us. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually how the band came to be as well. That's, uh, that's how we started a little bit by bit about three years ago yeah. now right so so personally what were what were your like maybe back in the day like what were your favorite music and what sort of 
artist uh, bands influenced you? She'll go. <laughs> Mila listens to everything. Yeah, it's like a crazy everything. part. Do you know? we, we, we... <laughs> everything. Yeah. I grew up listening to country music because that's where I come in Brazil. So I grew up going to the rodeo, going to live co country shows <laughs> and this kind of stuff. So I was like completely crazy. And then growing up in Brazil, you also have a lot of influence from samba, from Brazilian popular music, uh, bossa nova, of course. So also always listen a bit to it. And then in my teenage years, I start getting more into international music and more pop, more indie, more alternative uh, rock. And uh, yeah, my, my college years was like when I actually start finding out uh, more about international bands and rock and how I really like it. I did have uh, Brazilian rock, which I listened to it and I loved it. So it was kind of um, going from the national rock to the international <laughs> scene a, a little bit during college. So, but yeah, it was like kind of a, a really big mix. And then Miller listens like from metal to I don't know to Bossa Nova. Yeah, to to Bossa Nova as well. So it's but it's a Russian big well, yeah. <laughs> and then Alex, our drummer, she listens a lot to a little bit of everything as well. But mainly rock, progressive rock, hard yeah, rock, more hardish. Yeah. And from so, the light. <laughs> yeah. So we end up like with me listening to Bossa Nova growing up, with uh, Alex listening to progressive metal, to Mila listening to traditional Bulgarian songs. And that's, that's <laughs> how the pot kind of got mixed and we started doing our sound. Yeah. We're not right. really sure what to so, so Mia, as a guitarist, like, who do you think your influences are as a guitarist? Well, I'm, I can say that I'm really bad with names, <laughs> but I'm good with bands. Because the, the thing is, I was listening a lot to, to the old stuff. Uh, popular uh, bands such as Metallica, Megadeth, like more hardish, and somehow I learned from them how to play, because uh, my first song was Guns N' Roses Don't Cry, my ever first song that I ever played on acoustic, which is not on acoustic, you know, <laughs> but yeah, mm, even if I'm not listening to that much of uh, like more hardish songs, they're still my influencers, I mean, they teach me how to play, kind of, with the teachers and so on, but yeah, those songs. Right. And, and then you play some indie rock. Right? Yes, I play indie <laughs> rock. I yeah, still right. like some Brazilian rock. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, thank yeah. you. Right. So, so be a, as a vocalist, because typically this question, because vocalist is the, has a lot of more influences because you, you, so who do you look up to when it comes to your vocal? Well, I mean, I'm a major Lady Gaga fan. <laughs> <laughs> I just love her so much. So she does influence me a lot. It, it's the reason why I started singing lessons. She had just released an album. I was like, you know what? I'm going to sing as well. I'm going to take lessons and have some fun with it. And uh, But I also love uh, Florence Welsh, which then it's a bit more closer to, to what we do here. They are right. like two really big influences. Uh, to my singing, to, to to what I do, but I also listen a lot uh, of Aurora, which again completely out of what, the scope of what we do. Uh, a lot of Billie Eilish, a lot of Harry Styles, and then I will go back and listen a bit of The Killers and Oasis and uh, the, this kind of bands as well, which it's what I found out when I when I found out about rock a lot evanescence evanescence I'm not yeah, sure how to say in English actually yes <laughs> far more uh, I grew up listening a lot to to this kind of music and then when I was a bit older than it was when I met Florence and Gaga and Aurora and Billy of course Billy is very recent but I listen a lot I like how they use their instrument. I like how they come up with the melody and everything. So there is a lot of pop influence on my singing itself, uh, more than rock for sure. But I, I, I like a bit more rough, the singing. Uh, so that, that's where the rock came come 
uh, in plates. I, I really like more the rough, more the strong uh, vocal than to have a very light and airy. So much so that I fight a lot with my singing, my coaching teacher. She was very light and airy. I was like, I can do that. I need to scream my lungs out. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so you mentioned that you you three met through the school, the the singing school. But uh, do you remember how the idea came that you you wanted to start a band, uh, a group? It was like more your idea, actually. Yeah, I, I was having gigs around Sofia. So after I started having singing lessons, I started having gigs, and I started playing myself the guitar. But I am not no guitar player i just learned whatever i needed to learn so i could play the songs i had to play live yeah. and then because i had played with mila i said do you want to come and play with me these gigs uh that i'm playing around town and we started playing together just these gigs actually it wasn't at the beginning the idea wasn't to form a band and after playing a few gigs together like ah, oh, maybe we can uh, try to search somebody else and uh, maybe a drummer or a bassist we still didn't know at that point and see what we can come up with and 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 really a band because we were mainly playing acoustic and yeah. i really like it but i always had this feeling that no wait a second i need a, a drum i need something to give me more energy because acoustic is very nice but the difference of seeing us playing acoustic and seeing players plugged, it's like night and day. I, I go, uh, we go from a, a nice two band to a maniac jumping on the stage <laughs> nonstop. So I, I had the feeling that I, I really needed a full band behind me so I could get very energized and be jumping and be happy and screaming and so on. So after we had that first uh, experience of playing with full band, that was like, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> that's, it, that, that's what it needs to be. You know, we, we got to have a drummer and electric guitar and, and make it this way. So we have as much energy as we can give. Right. Uh, I, I'll try to guess that uh, this, that the, the name of the band, People of Maha, does this mean like, great people something like that so yeah, yeah. so actually <laughs> it's one of the things uh maha also means light in sanskrit so we really like the word and how it does have different meanings in different languages none of them are bad thank god yeah. <laughs> okay. so we really like the word and we we start playing around okay what what can we do with maha we can do people of Maha, we can do this Maha, that Maha, and then people of Maha was the one we liked the most. Right, uh, because in, in, in the Philippines, we have a word called Mahal, that means like love, like like honey or something like if you, yeah. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> close to that. But I, I know the word Maha because I'm actually originally from Sri Lanka, so we our language is close to Sanskrit. So uh, I think we use it uh, in a sense like great or big, Mm -hmm. Meaning Maha means like great <laughs> or big. So that's how probably that's why I was able to guess that. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, every time we talk to somebody else, they say, oh, you know, in my language, there okay, is a sorry. word that sounds like Maha that means this. So we are always adding new meanings to it. We're like, and eh, it's great, you know, that's all, all you can ask. Something that's live and moving and it's not always the same. So it makes right. it very, very fun conversations. <laughs> Yeah, you you uh, Bia, you said about the acoustic uh, playing, you, you playing the guitar by yourself. I saw some of your cover. I came across your YouTube channel and I saw some of your mm -hmm. covers that that you posted. Like, I love the one you did, like Jolene. You did Dolly Part cover of Jolene, right? <laughs> we played Jolene. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday we we're playing Jolene. <laughs> yeah, it's that song has become so famous, right? Because even I think Miley Cyrus did a famous cover of that as well. Yeah. She really brings that song back to this uh, era, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was something I started. I started a YouTube channel. I was like, let me add cover. So now, I, and that's at the very beginning of my, my singing lesson. So now I go back to listen. I was like, geez, how could I upload that? That sounds so bad now for me to my ear right now. But it was a great experience. And uh, yeah, we, we actually get to play a lot of acoustic gigs. Still yesterday, we were playing an acoustic gig. We played Jolene and a yeah. bunch of more of them. We really have a lot of fun trying to 
Oh my god, I Somehow enjoy come it. up with our version, uh, our acoustic versions of uh, some songs, so it's always fun. And we get to play a lot of Brazilian music as well when we do the acoustic. Then we bring in a little bit of bossa nova, a little bit of Brazilian popular music, a little bit of Brazilian rock as well into the gig. So it's always fun to play. Right. So with regards to your original music, how do you how how do you describe the sound of uh, people of Maha? It's a great question. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. So when people ask, oh, like, what kind of rock you are? We're like, alternative, just because we, we don't no really know. know. Yeah, we're like, we don't really know. We didn't set out to be like, oh, we're going to be a punk rock band. Or, oh, we're yeah. going to be an indie rock band. We sat down and we started writing music. And after we wrote, I don't know, 20 songs, we're like, okay, let's choose some of ah. them and, and make, it, make an album for it. And we sat down, we see then very different songs. We see Space Girl, that's a very weird <laughs> vibe and kind of spacey with some spoken word in the middle. And then you go to Darling, which does have some country and more bluesy influences. Then you go to Thursday, Thursday which again has some blues, more bluesy influence, but there is a rap in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> then you go, yeah, then you go all the way to along the last song, which is piano and voice. And you're like, what exactly is this? Well, I'm not sure. So let's call it alternative. Yeah. <laughs> when you don't know how to classify. So we really just kind of come up with the music that, that uh, we want to do or we are inspired on that day. And we just see what happens. And if tomorrow it turns out to do a full metal album, because, <laughs> well, okay, then uh, that's what we were feeling like at that period oh my of God. time. Yeah, but uh, it, it's been a lot of, it's been very organic. It's like not forcing something to happen, but rather let's see what we come up with and let's see how we can make this into an album. You know? And that's how Blue to Gold kind of came to be. Yeah, I, I, I always see this... Uh... Sometimes the fans get upset when a band uh, changes their like style or they do, they do something experimental. Uh, but I always feel that because artists are also people, right? So they also grow, their yeah. tastes change over time. The life experiences probably influence them to change certain things. So I think the change should be welcome, right? It's, it's, uh, it's not that you have to do your first album Style, it should be the same when you do your 15th album it should it should be the same <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we even joke uh, when we go play and the organizers say oh can you send me some of your music for us to listen we're like okay <laughs> what kind of festival is this is this a harder <laughs> festival then we're going to send the harder song is this a more <laughs> chupa then send the lighter song because in the end it became such a mix that we're just like uh, we kind of <laughs> here and there we don't different. fit anywhere here really in Bulgaria, but we kind of fit everywhere at some point. It's a, it's a very weird thing. And um, yeah, even in Bulgaria, it's there, as we said, like people here love metal. So most of the bands are actually very hard rock metal. So it was also hard for us yeah, to, to, to find like, oh, wait, where really do we fit in here? We don't fit at all with the our friends that list that uh, we knew more in the beginning, they're all in a hardcore band. We're like, and then we were gonna play a gig with them and it's us play <laughs> our our weird ass music and then they show up with the screaming also after us like, okay. Well. <laughs> but uh, bit by bit we were meeting more people and networking and getting to know more the scene as well. And now we kind of are finding more our space and people who do not something like us, but more similar to our style. So it's been a, a, a hard way to navigate these waters here. It's a journey. Yeah, it's it a, is a journey. Right. Uh, you've been doing this tour, so do you see like, see sometimes see the same people coming to the gig? Yeah, we've been doing some uh, festivals. Uh, around Bulgaria so sometimes we get to play with the same people this week as in two weeks we're like oh there yeah. you go again hi how yeah. you doing how you been this past two weeks yeah it's been a lot of fun but also we are playing with a bunch of new bands yeah which it's, is 
it's really nice that we can meet a lot of new people, which like they didn't maybe some knew about us, but some didn't know about us, and they said like, yeah, you are such a nice band. Yeah. Let, let's just work together at some point in the future. Yeah, we've been meeting a lot of nice people during tour, and for sure it's been like uh, a big help to getting to know more bands and getting to know more people and be more involved uh, in the scene itself. But yeah, we still do meet. Some people are like, oh, oh, hi, we're playing together next month. So I'll okay, we'll see you back then. So it's been a, a lot of fun with the ongoing same people and the new people yeah. as well. Right. So when you're playing, like, for example, if you're playing with like hard rock bands and what, how's the response of the, uh, I mean, for example, if they're seeing you for the first time, you know, this is three, three girls playing on stage and, you know, rocking it out. Like, how is the response from the audience? It depends the place. Really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it depends the place. Some places they just go along and they jump with us the whole time. The other place they look uh, puzzled, like what's going on here? Like, I thought I came to a us. So we did have some times where the public was amazing. I like just uh, uh, go jump with them in the middle of a song and uh, we are all having fun. And sometimes we do get uh, some people like on the, the sides, like, oh, okay, it's nice music, but I'm uh, not really sure. Yeah, I thought it was a metal festival. Like, so it's always fun to see the different reactions. Of course, we don't get anything personal because that would be just crazy. Like different people know, have yeah. different tastes in music. And also, just like us, we have tastes in so many kinds of, of different genres that we also understand that even though you are in a metal festival, that does not mean that you, you won't like, metal. yeah, and you just listen to metal, for sure you listen to more stuff, so we just go like, okay, let's go, let's get the exposure, let's get the experience also, the experience of playing so many festivals has been great, so it, it's a lot about that, but uh, yeah, we do get some weird looking <laughs> sometimes, but, but nothing <laughs> like uh, worrisome nothing, yeah. or anything crazy it's just usually they find a bit weird but they still go along with it right uh, so i've been listening to your album blue to gold then uh, on spotify uh i i like to talk about this song the silence because uh, it's it's such a different song but i really love that you the melody and uh, it, it's really exciting so can you tell me a little bit about the song what What's the idea about the song? Yeah, the silence. Uh, actually, Alex uh, started yeah. composing that song, and she brought to us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she brought to us the the melody, and then we worked on it. And uh, but yes, because she, she does like a bit more progressive, so it does have uh, a little bit uh, more different feel to the other songs. That then, for example, "Darling," that's a four by four more straight uh, forward song. That then uh, we started writing that because my influence are pop, they're more straight four by four. So Alex likes a bit more progressive and changing in the BPM of style. the song and and so on. So there is. Uh, it is a little bit more, com she always comes with us with an eight minute song and we cut down to <laughs> a five. So that, that's very common. And that was the case for the silence as well. But uh, the silence was an interesting song to write. She was originally, actually it was originally an acoustic song, uh, only acoustic guitar and voice. And we adapted to, to the full band and I had to adapt to my voice as well because Alex uh, wrote for 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 her voice the song so there was a lot of adapting the song okay how do we get to this melody and transfer to uh, electric guitar how do we add drums in a way that uh, it, it, will, it, will, it will fit well and then our friends villain who recorded the bass for the album uh, he came up with with the bass line which we love the bass line for for yeah. that for that song we really love the bass line and then I just had to figure out how to move and how to change the dynamic of the vocals to a plugged song instead of, of an acoustic. Okay, so where would you be? What will happen here? And so on. And some things for the song that they actually happened in the studio. We had actually brought uh, several friends to sing Don't so, with us. And then our producer said, oh, you know what would be cool? Maybe we can add a choir in a, 
in the silence as well. So the, the ending of the silence with the, the many vocals, with the gang vocals and, and the group vocals, they, it actually happened naturally in the studio itself. And yeah, it was more an adaptation process, but the, the song itself, it was a very interesting song to work with. And it was one of the last songs actually we, mm -hmm. we recorded. Uh, we recorded, we, we created, so it's probably one of the newest songs in the album compared to Space Girl, which was the first song we ever yeah. wrote in the album like two years ago. So we see a lot of improvement, how things got more complicated <laughs> <laughs> with the songs and how we developed everything much better there in our point of view, uh, rather than the earlier songs. Right. <clears throat> so your, your current tour, so how many how many more uh, legs on on that on that tour how many more shows that's a great question i think we have at least some more six Tall more. yeah <laughs> more. Uh, we have uh, i just oh. look at the calendar i was like okay i need to go here and there but <laughs> we do have uh, several more gigs to go still we will be doing until september so we're just at the beginning of august we'll, we'll have a break now of about two weeks because so we've been on the road for 10 days straight so yeah. we'll go home we'll rest a bit i'll recover my voice because my voice is just, <laughs> it's not good today <laughs> but yeah we'll, we'll be back uh, we still have um, several cities in Bulgaria that we need to travel. Someone closer to home will be back here, the seaside as well, which is the completely opposite side of the country right now we are. So um, bit by bit, but we do have at least about six, eight yeah. more dates confirmed, but uh, we are also starting to work on the autumn, autumn gigs, which won't be a tour, but we'll, we'll still get to play with bands in Sofia, with bands, uh, we have cool bands uh, that are releasing new music that invited us to play with them. It's still not announced, but uh, soon it will be. So we we are starting to arrange a bit more for the for the autumn right now for the fall for the fall dates. But for the summer, we still have some yeah. some time to go there. And sometimes I get crazy, like how we're we gonna do all this. <laughs> not sure, but that's the best experience. Yeah, yeah, right. So would you would you also consider extending it to neighboring countries as well? Most definitely, yeah. We would love to. We did start applying for festivals abroad as well. Uh, we're probably going to Romania in in October, and that will be really fun. But Greece also has a great scene here with uh, alternative rock, with indie rock. So it's also a great uh, uh, a great place for us to go. So. We are testing the waters a bit with the with the summer tour here on Bulgaria, and then we start expanding a bit by bit. You know, like now we go to Macedonia, now we yeah. go to Greece, now we go uh, to Romania. But definitely, most definitely, that for us that seems like the natural next step. We did Bulgaria, great. Now we need let's to go, see yeah. where else we can go, what else we can do. I think. The, the whole band itself, it was very much like naturally happening. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we found a guitar player. Now we found a drummer. Now we write the first song, of course. That's, That's the first <laughs> thing we do. We write the first song. We wrote the first song. Okay, now we write the next song. Now we schedule a gig and now we do this and that. And we're just falling, like not okay. feeling like we've, we've reached an end. Like, yes, we did a Bulgarian tour, great. That was the goal. It's always like, okay, we did the Bulgarian tour. What's the next step? What's the next step? So it's always been like this. We are doing this right now, but thinking, okay, what's the next step? What do we work on next? Uh, yeah, it's this has been the process so far. <laughs> right. So I I actually first noticed you guys uh, on the I think it's on CJC promotions page. Uh, yeah. This yeah. Uh, <laughs> blue to gold album cover, which it's it's such a weird album cover, like. The way you are, <laughs> what you're wearing, and then it looks more like a like a cow movie poster from a, like a gangster movie, like some sort of a, like mm. a gangster movie, right? It's, uh, <laughs> we never heard that. No, but I love it. <laughs> it's like very, very kind of creepy, also, but you know, in a good way. Uh, how, how how did you decide it for that particular shot to to use as album cover? <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, that is a uh, the album cover was shot in Pancharevo, which is this lake close by Sofia, which is next, just next neighborhood yeah. over. It's very close by. I was just walking in Pancharevo with my dogs one day. I was like, oh, you know, this uh, you can see the lake and the sun. It's such a beautiful shot. And then because we already had this idea of uh, Blue to Gold to be the name of the album, I just thought, oh, you know, there is the blue water and the, mm -hmm. and the, 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 bright, uh, the bright sun, which can be gold. I was like, it would be nice to have a picture that is a gradient that goes blue to gold to kind of combine with the album. And then we talked about it with uh, Don, our photographer. I was like, so we have this idea what do you think? And I was like, oh, I have a spot that uh, you, might, you might be able to connect to this idea like, of the water going into the sun, you know? And then uh, we actually had to take a hike, like an hour hike yeah. up, up to that place. So we are all dressed and in makeup and ready to go and hiking, hiking. <laughs> up the mountain for an hour so we could get there. Uh, yeah, we just tried different things around, and that was the shot. We're like, okay, that's great. That's that's, that's why. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so, uh, what's what what's happening with uh, after this album? So, what are you working on? New songs? Do you have new songs right now that you play in your gigs? <laughs> well, for now, like for me especially, I have. I think it's two or three songs. Yeah, we've been working on a few songs. Yeah. yeah. Individually, we've been working in a few songs, but we haven't sat down as a band to develop together. That's usually how it goes. We have a thought, we write it down, and we bring to the band so we can work together. So I know Mila has few, I have few, Alex has few. But uh, right now, we are actually thinking about uh, doing uh, an EP, which is kind of backwards we did an album yeah. now we do an EP but uh, we are looking forward to release something acoustic because as I said we do a lot of acoustic and we really enjoy it so we're thinking about releasing a little bit of our album into an acoustic version and then add a few more songs that are not released so right now we are working on that idea and uh, you had Jamie here right in your right. Uh, in your podcast yeah Jamie is a good friend of us yeah. who where we are actually discussing the idea and we, we might develop together in the next few months. So we'll probably do something acoustic next, uh, a, little, a little bit different from, from, from the album, but just to have fun, just uh, to do something different and something that we also enjoy, that we do a lot. We do a lot yeah, of acoustic gigs, so it'll be fun as well to put out something acoustic. Right. So how how is the response for the songs that you already put in the platform the your the, your current album uh, like Spotify? Uh, do you surprise like the places the people lis listening these songs? Like, is there any surprises? It's kind of really nice when you go to play somewhere and some people knows your song. I mean, which that's the point for right? to show to people like our song if they can feel the our feeling when we play the songs. Mm. But yeah, yeah, we did have a good response from Bulgarian radios as well. We've, when the album was released about two months ago, we were doing also a, a radio tour in, in, in Bulgaria and we had a really good response. So it was really nice to see because we really didn't know how it would go because when we just listen to your friends' opinions for so long, you, uh, yeah. you might think you're the best musician in the whole <laughs> world and then you release something and it's like, <laughs> not really. But uh, yeah, no, it's been really fun. It's been fun to watch people tell us what's their favorite song and that song changing on later and uh, how they went with us along for, for every new release, for every video, for every single. But yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's also been fun to play live, and then people that you sound just like the album. I was like, well, well what I did you expect? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect you to sound like the album. I was like, I'm not That's sure. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure if I should take that as a compliment. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, Bia, Mia, who, what's your message to the people? who support you to your gigs, listen to your music, and also people who will watch this uh, video. What's your message to them? Well, I think for us, it's a dream come true, really, to be able yeah. to release an album, to be able to, to play live. And 
really the support we've been getting, we, we couldn't be happier. We couldn't be more grateful for having people listening to us, even if it's just that one time that you give an album a listen, that for us means a lot, you know? Yeah. The album is so personal. It talks so much about our personal struggles, our personal experience. Every single song relates to a direct experience or a direct uh, struggle that one of us had in life. So it really means a lot that people are giving a listen and people are enjoying the album with us. So it's been a crazy experience. It's been very surreal, very unexpected. Something that to us means a lot, but we're just very grateful, very, very grateful for so. Thank you to everybody who's been listening. Yeah, thank you. You really can't imagine how happy it makes us when somebody posts that they listen to the album, or write us and tell us, oh, this song is my favorite. It really means a lot. So we are nothing but grateful at, at yeah. this point with everything. I can just say, follow your dreams. Yeah, yeah. yeah just follow your dreams. That's something like, uh, I never. That's my dream. Yeah, I never. <laughs> We never really thought that we could be musicians. We thought that music was a hobby or music is something that you did on the side. We never thought that it was really possible until we started doing and bit by bit things start happening. So really, if you if you got a dream, just go after it because even if it doesn't happen, you'll have so much fun. Yeah. So much fun on, on the way that for sure the experience itself would be more than worth it. Right. Uh, anybody you want to shout out to? Well, Alex, hope you're doing better there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also I have a huge thanks to, to Vasco Raikov, that's our producer. He's in a rock band here in Bulgaria called Odd Crew. Always so much fun to listen. So if you're looking for a bit harder of rock, there, yeah. there you go. Also, Svilan, our lovely bassist for the album. He wrote some of the songs for us, for the bass line for the song. So it was amazing to work. And of course, Don. For yeah, putting up with a, us yeah. and the cover and, uh, <laughs> and every videos. every yeah and the video and and everything we we kind of ask of them he just goes along with us so <laughs> we're really grateful for the people we've been working on and of course uh, Catherine from C CGC for putting us in contact with you and uh, it really she she's making our album being heard all over the globe and that's just just that's crazy else. to think yeah. it's just crazy to think so we're really really grateful for her as well right <clears throat> so uh bmia thanks for joining uh this i really enjoy no. talking to you uh so all the best so with your tour. Yeah. <laughs> all the best I with think. your tour i i i i i wish that you will be able to go beyond bulgaria and maybe someday even come to asia and play here so, okay, so all the best and uh, keep making great music. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. It was a it lot was of a fun. Pleasure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Right. So lastly, tell everyone how they can follow you and on social media and then how, where they can listen to your music. Everywhere is people of Maha. Uh, yeah, from YouTube to Spotify yeah. to Twitter. Oh, yeah, Twitter. that's people <laughs> of Maha. Maha is M-A-H-A. And yeah, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere is there. You can find us on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, also on Bandcamp if you want to buy the album uh, online. Just head over there and you'll be able to, to hear and to buy the album. Or if you just want to give it a listen, connect Spotify also there. And you can watch the videos and the singles for the, for the album all on YouTube, lyric videos as well. Everything is there. Okay, uh, thanks. Mia, thanks, Pia. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank Have you so much. Have a great day. You Have too. a lovely day. You too. Bye-bye.